I'm like supposedly successful according to American standards. You know, I was born and raised here. I have a college degree and I'm unable to pay rent. To me, that's ridiculous. And this is Martha Escudero. She's a home health aide and a mother of two in Los Angeles, living under the state's stay at home order. Hi. But the house she lives in doesn't belong to her. Martha's a housing activist in a group called the Reclaimers. When the coronavirus became an immediate threat in March, they say they took over vacant houses owned by the state of California, without a lease and without permission, so they could safely social distance. Before we were pretty much couch surfing, sometimes sleeping on a spare bed, sometimes on the floor. This is a health hazard. We cannot wait years in order to get secure housing when there's people now literally dying on the streets and spreading this pandemic. The Reclaimers are protesting the shortage of affordable housing, a long-standing crisis made worse by the pandemic. And while most Americans won't be seizing houses, many are pushing landlords and governments to make bigger changes to the housing system and to do it faster. Incomes are just too low for people at the bottom. So these households can't build up any kind of savings, any rainy day fund, which means that as soon as they lose hours or lose a job, they just can't pay their basic monthly bills. One in four U.S. renters spent more than half their income in rent in 2018. Then coronavirus happened. More than 36 million people have filed for unemployment in the last two months. I think we've been ignoring this really big problem for a long time. And to the extent that sort of guerrilla tactics draw more attention to it, this could lead to better policy. I think people were at their wits end before, but people were like pulling their hair out and are absolutely over it. Kirby Joseph organizes tenants in New York City. On May 1st, some renters across the country held demonstrations to tell politicians to cancel rent and rent debt during the crisis. This is a moment to make sure that people can survive. If people are not being allowed to work, then you can't expect them to be able to pay rent. It's kind of crazy. More than half of Americans already lived paycheck to paycheck before coronavirus. Then in March, 40% of households making less than $40,000 a year lost a job. As more and more people wonder how they'll make rent during and after the pandemic, many landlords are wondering the same thing. How many of your tenants have been affected economically by the pandemic? Half of them are either laid off or furloughed or in some state of employment limbo. I have to go up there and say, okay, we want to keep you here but we gotta find a way to make this work. If the income isn't coming into landlords, they can't pay their mortgage. But even beyond the mortgage, landlords have to pay property taxes to local governments. Local governments use that to pay for services like public health and providing you know, meals to kids in school. John is a landlord to about 30 tenants in Detroit. He's allowed some of his tenants to do landscaping work to help make up for what they can't pay in rent. How many months do you think you can go on like this? So I can have my tenants continue to do work for me through May and June. I do know that for small landlords like myself, nobody's watching out for us. The SBA loans, uh-uh, those aren't coming our way. For now, activists, tenants, and landlords are just trying to get through the pandemic. Trying to paper over holes in the safety net for two months or three months is hard, but maybe doable. But trying to like float people for six months or eight months if jobs don't come back that quickly. Local governments are so concerned with the immediate crisis, that, like there's no long-term planning. States like California, New York, and Michigan have been taking some steps to build more affordable housing. But experts say it's not enough to overcome two big hurdles that these units cost too much to build and that wealthier people don't want them built in their neighborhoods. The problem is especially acute in places like New York and DC and basically the entire West Coast because we haven't been building enough housing to keep up with demand for the past 30 years. The only way the developer can cover the costs of construction is to be charging fairly high rents. So if we want more housing to be built at lower price points initially, we're gonna have to make it easier and cheaper to build. Just having housing, housing as a human right, where it can be equitable and affordable for everybody can really transform our lives 